Hello, uh, my year 10 class, this is Mr. Wong. Uh, this is a video about your IGCSC physics, chapter 10, electronics and uh, logic gates, basically. So we have um, our video for you to, to have the lessons. So before that, I will want you to prepare yourself by downloading the notes, which will be very helpful. Uh, if you have a printer at home, uh, make sure you print it out. At least if you don't have it, then you can see how you can uh, make notes on it by uh, you know using different kind of software. I mean, if you have any question, you can always find me for that. And at the same time, I'll put the link in the description. If you forgot to bring back home the test book, uh, then I will allow you to uh, take a look of the test book here, which will be very useful. Uh, again, I'll put the link in the description and you can get access to it. So let's get started. Uh, this chapter is more about, as I said, logic gates and some basic electronics. So let's go to page three. Now I want you to spend some time, uh, read the textbook page 228 to 229 and uh, fill in the blanks for this page. You can now pause the video and get back to us uh, later on. Okay, so let's take a look of the answer. Uh, for the first one, it's called the resistor, which is something you learned uh, already in the last chapter. Uh, looks like this one. Uh, it's simply something used later on uh, if you want to make a smart system, uh, this would be very helpful. The next thing is called the dial, which I, I'm pretty sure you have heard about it as well. Uh, the symbol is something like this which if you recall, it only allows current to flow in one direction. For example, if the symbol looks like this, then you can only let the current to go from the left to the right. But if you try to get a current go from the opposite direction, that means from the right to the left, it won't work. Okay, so this is the way how we can use this to help to make a system called uh, rectifier. Uh, the process is called rectification to change AC to DC. If you recall what AC is, AC is meaning that the current is more like a waveform. So something like this. If you imagine this is the voltage or the current V against T and then it may help you to turn into DC which means it could be something like this or it could be something at least something like this. Alright or something like this all right we, we still call it dc but it's not a very nice dc to work with but uh dial is one of the most essential components to make it uh in this way uh the third thing is actually out of syllabus uh but it's just so you know uh, something called capacitor you get to learn it in ib physics if you're interested so basically it's something to store the uh ele electricity like or, or storing uh, more precisely the uh, electrical charge if you want to look a look of the picture, you can try to search on Google. It's very easy. For uh, the next one, it's called the integrated circuit. Uh, people call it IC, simply. It's basically those kind of chips which are uh, made by the robots or manufacturers uh, where they kind of condense all these something called resistor, transistor, or other component into a very tiny chips which looks like something like this. Maybe later on, I'll show you a Google picture. Uh, for transistor, is against this is also out of syllabus. Uh, but it was out of syllabus. Um, well, as you say, it was in the syllabus uh, before 2016. So now, when you are taking IGCSE, you don't have to learn about this precisely, like in detail. Um, if you look at some past paper uh, before this one, you will see it. It looks something like this uh, with three legs. So. Uh, if in case you see it, then you simply just skip it. I would say to make your you know your your revision time more efficient. But just so you know, this is out of syllabus now. The next thing is called relay. Again, this is also out of syllabus. Uh, and the main idea is uh, to amplify the signal. So that is to say, for example, if you have a device, uh, for example, I'm teaching STEM, and there's something called micro bits. It's just uh, like a board. Uh, it can only support 3.3 3 volts um, only, output 3.3 .3 volts. But if you want to, for example, use this to control air con, um, then you may need a very high voltage. So in that case, uh, using micro bit only cannot be able to power, or power up the whole devices. So the only way you can do is to use a relay to connect between these two 
and then this relay actually is like a gate so once it receives a signal then the relay can uh, con let the AC to switch on directly the next one is called the um, LED and which is something that uh, we have seen in the class and also uh, this is something useful when you want to show uh, a signal uh, that is received by growing light simply um, I'm, again I'm sure you have seen it in your daily life uh, the last one is called re-switch so uh, this is basically a again a switch apparently uh, controlled by magnetic field so I'll show your videos very soon and uh, that will explain how it works okay here is a video of re-switch so basically uh, from the quality of the video you can tell it was invented long ago and the working principle is very simple as you can see uh, the re-switch itself is simply a, a, a also an electronic component which has two metal stick inside this vacuum chamber and um, they are separate with a very tiny space uh, and with the presence of magnetic field that means uh, if you simply put a place a magnet between them then they will stick close to each other because they got magnetized so in that case uh, it would be useful for making a switch which controlled by ma magnet think about that um, this is a device or a component where you must have one at home again I'm 100% sure you have that at home think about that you may want to pause the video think about that where you can find it at home here is an interesting application of re-switch so take a look basically on the left hand side here this is a magnet and you can see that when the magnet is getting close to the to the circuit which is the wire here actually it's getting close to re-switch here then you can see the LED will switch on and then of course if this is away from the re-switch then uh, it will switch off in that case again I'll put a link in the description so for now I think you should be able to think about what kind of re-switch you will have at home the answer is actually your fridge think about that uh, when you close the switch or open the switch the light will switch on and that's something to do with the re-switch but of course it, that will be actually opposite to this um, circuit so you have a little bit more work than doing this simply but the idea is the same and the component they use for sure that would include a re-switch here is some photos of uh, different electronics you may search from on Google this is a transistor as I said they are Felix uh, is also actually a switch as well uh, which you have to learn it in the past so if you're interested I'll put another link in the description and you can take a look of that is actually very very interesting and this actually makes computer possible nowadays uh, the next thing that you may recall is called capacitor and again it is all syllabus now uh, it looks something like this okay so it looks like a bucket where it simply store the electrical charge in it the next thing is called the integrated circuit IC which again if you open your computer you find a lot there alright so it includes a lot a lot of uh, IC and each leg actually is like uh, a different pin um, in the circuit different different um, branch in the circuit I should say uh, and uh, this actually makes computer uh, small possibly the last thing that you may uh, have seen on the list is called the relay and you can see this is a relay component uh, you can imagine one side is connected to another device which will give a signal to the relay and if there is a positive signal then uh, the relay will allow the current to flow through uh, to the other side so this helps uh, to help you to power up something uh, with high voltage okay for the next part is something to do with the signal in itself uh, and you may find the first one is called the analog signal and the next one is called the digital signal so the basic idea of these two is uh, analog similar to the AC current I talk about it actually will vary the value will vary so it's more like a continuous function if you recall that from your mathematics uh, continuous function well digital again the previous one is analog the digital is uh, basically something like a step function which uh, it, in, in terms of numbers you may imagine it's not 1 and 0 1 and 0 or 1 
one. So a bit like Morse code, if you know, know about Morse code. Um, and this is actually very helpful for us nowadays for communication because uh, when you're communicating with only one and zero, it's more definite. And that's why nowadays the television and all those things get uh, so well defined. That means the resolution, the pictures are so nice, the YouTube video in high quality, all thanks to digital signal. Uh, and that actually is made from the analog. So imagine uh, people use some algorithm in computer science, they change the analog signal to digital signal by simply taking, for example, oh, uh, all this part is converted to one and all this part converted to zero, something like this, all right? So that's just the basic idea.